All right, guys, I hope you're ready to get started on um, learning about the link layer and how to show that data with TCP dump. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to sniff on an interface and we're going to pass the dash E option. And this is what actually um, says, hey, give us the link layer information. And, this, and the E is short for Ethernet. Uh, so we can do this. And sudo. Ooh, there's a lot of data there. Let's just print one pack to make it easy. And what you can see here is that we have a MAC address instead of the usual usual IP addresses that are normally seen here. And just to um, contrast that, let's get rid of that. Print the next one. And you can see now there's the source and destination uh, IP addresses, where here we have the source and destination MAC addresses. So what? who is this, this MAC address? Well, let's take a look. It's probably me because it's my machine. And let's do IP link show eth0. You can see that my ethernet address is 80800 blah, 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 84 is the ending. So let's just match that. 0800 blah, 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 and then 84 the ending. So that was my machine sending out an ethernet frame. Okay, so now that we see what that looks like, let's actually go over and talk about the ethernet header, header a little bit. So here's the ethernet header. Uh, you have a number of fields. The first one is the preamble, which is used in carrier sense multiple access over cl collision detection algorithms to synchronize who has access to the wire. That is, they take their turns between sending frames, the, the hosts do. Uh, then you have the destination MAC address, the source MAC address, the ether type field. And this particular field is a two byte field that has the value of it set as a number that indicates the protocol that this ethernet frame is carrying. So if it was carrying IP, an IP packet above it, then this would be set to 0800 and every single uh, protocol that can carry at the, at the internet layer of in the uh, TCP IP model will, or the network layer, it will have its own uh, field for this. I think ARP is 0806, for example, and these, the data of these, that is the IP field or the ARP field will actually be carried in this data portion. It is, it's just added right after. And then you have the frame check some sequence number, which is a way to validate a particular frame. It, uh, if it does not pass the, ch the uh, check some sequence algorithm when it's received, the, the network car will typically discard the frame and then increment some variable that says, hey, we lost a packet or we lost a frame. Okay, so as far as the frame is concerned and you are concerned with sniffing, the preamble will never be seen by the host. Or I should say it can be seen, but in most hardware that you'll be working with, it will not be seen. It requires special special purpose NICs to actually pass the preamble up to the operating system. Otherwise, it's typically chopped off. Same with the frame checksum sequence. This field over here is typically also validated and then if it passes, it's removed. And if it fails, again, the frame is discarded. You won't actually see it in the, in the operating system. Now, granted, TCP dump and other tools have support for this. There's a, in TCP dump specifically, there is a link type called um, Linux Net Analyzer, I believe, that allows you to, uh, if that data is passed, as the preamble is passed, it stores it in a structure and it can actually print it out. And, and we can, you can work with it. But again, you have to have special hardware to do so. Most, most cards will only give you between the destination address and the data when it's coming from the NIC to the host. Okay, so now you have a little information about that. Let's take a look at um, some frames. Now I have that john.pcat file from the previous video, which I used to, the, to make a web request to my website and then see the web, web response. So let's take a quick look at, uh, let's read this in john.pcat. Let's just add the eth, uh, ethernet option, the dash E. And what we're going to do is we'll print, uh, say, three packets. Just take a gander at them. And you can see with the Ethernet option, it's now like three lines per packet. I'm sorry, it is one line per packet as always, but they are wrapped based on my terminal um, uh, width and height, wrapped to ending up being three lines. So the more data you out are you output, the, the longer the wraps are going to be. So you can see that here is a host. 
and it's sending a packet destined to this host. The Ethernet type value is set to 0800, like I said earlier, which indicates it's an IP version 4. TC don't let you know that, it looks it up. Then you can see after you can get the length of the packet, then it tells you the IP address information after, and then you can see that it's actually carrying a TCP packet, and I know this um, by uh, the, the actual output that TCP don't displays. And you can, this is a TCP sequence number, this is a TCP acknowledge number, these are TCP flags, etc. So this is showing you how the Ethernet frame carries the, the Ethernet portion, carries the IP portion, which then carries the TCP portion in these cases. Okay, so now what we're going to do is to get more closely familiar with the Ethernet data or the Ethernet frame, we're going to sniff live on an interface. I'll just do ETH1. What we're going to do is we're going to pass the Ethernet option to display that data. And then we're going to pass, remember the hex option earlier? The X? Well, in the case, if you want to display the in hex the actual Ethernet data, you have to use two Xs. So double Xs means display the entire frame, including the Ethernet header, in hexadecimal. And we're going to go ahead and print, uh, we'll just print one packet for now, see how it looks. Okay, need to become root, of course, got to open up a socket and bind to it. Okay, now we have it. In this particular case, um, this is not an IP, IP packet writing above the Ethernet frame. What we have here is we have the destination MAC address here. Remember, these are each two digit set of hex numbers is a byte. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six. So this entire six byte address as we correspond to six bytes here for the destination MAC address is first. That's the destination MAC address. Then we count six again. So there's there's two bytes per, per block here. And two times three, six. So there's the source address. Then after that, we actually have the ether type field. If we go again, look over here, that is the two byte ether type field. And that is a value of 0027. And in this case, it is the spanning tree protocol. So this is a particular protocol um, for, to help eliminate redundancy of, of paths in switches. But let's go ahead and, so now that we see that, let's go ahead and try to get another packet. Hopefully it won't be spanning tree. Oh, it is. Let's try um, try another interface. Let's do three packets. Aha, so now we have some IP stuff here. So let's start up here. Again, same thing, except now there's the destination. Now it's an IP because you can see that the IP TCP said, oh, it's 0800. That's IP version 4, right? So destination, six byte MAC address there. The six byte source MAC address here. And then the 0800 here. And then after that, the IP version number, number four, and then a few other values. The five is the number of 32-bit words inside the IP header, and that five times four, because a word, in the way we're referring to it, our 32-bit word is four bytes. So four multiplied by five suggests that the header is gonna be 20 bytes. And we'll get all into this in other videos during the protocol review. But, now you know that um, you can you can see how you can parse this information um, to get further acquainted with this with this uh, link layer level of data. I'm going to give one more example um, with uh, viewing the link layer data that just shows another way you can use the snap length. So let's go back to our example where we're sniffing live. Here we go. And we want to just print the Ethernet header. We don't want any, like in this previous packet, we don't want all this stuff. We just want the first 14 bytes. So we're going to say, hey, set the snap length to 14. And remember, again, the snap length only works when you're capturing new packets, and that is from a live interface. It does not work while reading from a file, which is just because of the way the libpcap lib library works. So what we're gonna do is say 14, that is gonna capture bytes zero through 13, a total of 14 bytes. And we'll go ahead and print the first three. Now, what we can see is we have the parsed out stuff that TCP does for us, and then we just have a single line that contains those 14 bytes. And 
here we have the, again, the actual destination MAC address, the source MAC address, and then, which is 12 bytes total, right? Six for each of these, and that's 12 total, or that's 12, and then we add two more bytes for the ether type field, which is 0800, and voila, now we have just the ethernet header displayed for us right here. So that's why we can just key in and kind of remove some clutter. It's just another reason to use the snap length. Let's go ahead and open up um, a browser and let's see if we can get TCP dump uh, link. Oh yes, perfect. First, oh, I just saw it, a uh, link level headers. Where did that go away? There we go, okay. So this is a list of all the link layer head, head level headers that TCP dump supports. Let me kind of zoom out here a little, just a little bit. You can see that we have Ethernet, and then they have descriptions for each one. So the 10, 100, and 1,000 and up. This is what we're using when we're capturing from our Ethernet interface. But also does other link layer protocols like SLIP, PPP, FDDI, and a, and a few others that you may or may not need. So just be aware that these are available. So you can just you can actually view more than Ethernet um, at the layer two level. All right, that concludes this lesson. Thank you.